Hello and welcome to NDTV. I'm Rohit Kildani. Uh, there's a brief introduction for my guest today. Uh, he has won, uh, if I'm not wrong, six national awards, two Academy Awards, two Grammys, one BAFTA, one Golden Globe, uh, Padma Bhushan by the Indian government. Mr. A.R. Rahman, thank you so much for giving me time. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, you know, when I say this introduction, when I, you know, your fans would say this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. The best is yet to come on this. Yeah, of course. Right. Um, so I watched, uh, I watched your episode uh, on, uh, the, which will be out on Nat Geo. Um, it starts with a montage of you performing in London, Manchester, different places. When you see that montage, what crosses your mind? I feel really blessed. Um, because starting from like my wife always, I mean, she makes fun of me. Like, <laughs> remember you first recording, you switched off the light when, right. because I think money told her that how right. I recorded the first song. Right. So she keeps saying, look, look at that, that person and this person, I changed you, she says. <laughs> <laughs> so she takes the credit for that. Okay. And okay. Uh, so she does a costume. So, I mean, in front of the audiences, because you're doing your own uh, songs, you can interpret it in a different way. Right. There is definitely a fantastic high and also terrifying at the same time. <laughs> because, uh, you know, when you're performing, you right. want the many things which has to come together. Right. And I'm also very, very, very concerned about safety of people and when they right. come and they go out. <laughs> and, but beyond that, when you're all in unison, when you're performing and when they react, it's the best feeling. Because people who are performing with me, my, my artists, my musicians, and even for them, you know, when we rehearse, it's like really dead. We're just doing, we're tired, <laughs> we're checking the mic and we're checking the tempo and choreography and everything. And, but it all comes alive when, when you see the real people out there. Right. You know, just that, bought that, the tickets, spending the time with us. And... Right. Yeah, you know, we saw the euphoria and that the, every, every, each one of those was so electrifying. Uh, so that must be some experience. The, the best part of, about uh, the, you know, the Mega Icons episode is it shows the person behind the maestro. So I, I'm going to go through some of that if you don't mind. Uh, you know, starting with your childhood, um, you, you know, your sister in this episode talks about you sitting and learning from your father. What is your memory from those days? My memory... Uh, I don't actually remember anything <laughs> because my memory is only uh, seeing him suffer in the hospital <laughs> right. those three, three years. But the aura which surrounded him as a good human being, musician, mm. which haunted me for the next seven years when I was playing in the studios, right. people talking about him, good things constantly. Mm. That actually probably set the foundation for my character. Course, yeah. Like, you know, what my father did, what he bought and how he introduced new people and he brought a lot of instruments. And I think I just took that a little bit more further. So. He really wanted you to take it ahead. You know, uh, unfortunately, he passed away in 78. Life changed immediately <laughs> after that. After that, you know, you were working in studios, you were setting up equipment. Uh, Mr. Bharat Bala talks about taking you on a scooter. Um, what was what was that phase like when you suddenly became this breadwinner of the house? Uh, there are a lot of questions. Like, first of all, I was an introvert. I had low self-esteem. And uh, so I think I had to fight it all out. I think that's one of the reasons why I changed my name. Right. <laughs> well, I just want to forget all the um, human failures which I had myself. Right. And try to to reinvent myself completely, rethink myself as a personality, the way I was uh, expressing myself, more bold, more courageous, more, um, yeah. Right. You know, so did, did, did the change of name, you know, suddenly change things for you? Did you feel it? Did you want to believe in it? And that's why it changed? Yes. I think it gave me a whole new identity and a whole new resonance within me right. and uh, I mean spiritual reasons also of course. but also as an image as I would say in many different ways um, spiritual reasons one right. and the other is also like you're being born again and you 
your instincts have been different become different the the pessimistic attitudes which i had all changed you are saying this on tv that you know there are ar rahman songs which have not released filmmakers are going to come calling after listening to all this um you know uh, when you wait after the change of name i want to ask you also mr rahman how much of a role has religion played in just your your career in just being the person that you are the most importantly is um i am not driving my life my decisions are just to augment or complement right what destiny has given me right and that i'm nowhere inferior right. to anyone only through my deeds i'm superior not through the birth or uh, not through where i'm born but so there's a larger perspective in my life and and that perspective actually changed me like i'm not inferior to this people that person that person no all that those things which in mentally torture you those walls you created those walls the society has created right those were broken and um, so initially uh, like even when i used to be in the play in the studios like oh you can't do that so that kind of talks usually come among friends and mm-hmm. those are broken as like it will can happen you know now there's a whole new system of believing in in, in my mind right. and it psychologically affected me in a good way yeah. and also not to go over the board like right um in a very spiritual sense which is very universal in every religion it talks about ego it talks about uh when there's ego inside there's no god inside right <laughs> only right. only one could have space right so that ego is a personal ego not a creative ambition that right. so i try to even that was a confusing so you, if person doesn't have ego why why does he create great things he can't create great things it's like i don't need to work but you need to separate both in it's complex but uh i think now i am in a position where i'm more interested in the gnosis and and mystical internal consciousness which uh, which is the secret of every uh, being because the more you evolve you you realize there's much more in it right when you learn you feel that you're not learned at all right and whether in music or whether in life or whether the way you interact with people right much much many better ways to deal with things and right. those are unveiling which is really cool so to be at this spiritual stage where you are to achieve this kind of sanity do you do you read a lot about things that you're interested in you know there's a famous seeking uh, saying which says uh, uh, what you what you're seeking what you seek is seeking you right right so when 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 you are wanting to acquire a certain knowledge there's a certain um thirst within you right that thing which is going to quench the taste is also approaching you right and uh, i i believe that in it it's either knowledge about a chord progression in music or spirituality or whether it's you need a guide or whether you need a certain you know collaborator right and it's so true because we we are all connected right and sometimes i think of a person a, a friend or a musician who was was played with me 15 years back and mm-hmm. suddenly you get a call and he said what's what's going on i just thought about you one hour back and i'm seeing your email man and so it's fun to see all these things happen you know there are there's definitely knowledge which which is beyond us it's fascinating to learn that right 